Hey, how's it going? Ben here again. Great to see you. Thanks for tuning in. In this video, I wanted to talk about stock photography and I wanted to try and answer the question, is stock photography worth your time? I wanted to try and answer this question because I do upload to stock photography websites and I've asked myself this question over and over again. Given the very high cost of um, camera equipment and editing software, and the very high cost of time out taking photographs and um, back on the computer editing photographs, how can um, the often very small returns from stock photography be considered worth your time? If you're interested in getting started with stock photography, then I am going to leave a link to Shutterstock in the description below. So definitely check that out after you've watched this video. Shutterstock is a great place to start as it's very simple and very easy to start uploading images and start potentially earning some money back from your photography. What is stock photography? I thought it would be worth um, starting this video with a little bit of a description of what stock photography is. Stock photography websites such as Shutterstock, Shutterstock being one of the bigger names out there, are large catalogues of user uploaded photographs. These photographs, these large catalogues of photographs that are collected in places like Shutterstock can be downloaded um, by users, by individuals or businesses. Um, so it does cost a small fee to download one of these images or I believe there are subscription offers if you are someone who needs to use stock photographs. Um, this fee for each downloaded image is split between Shutterstock and the photographer who uploaded them. In an ever increasingly digital world full of um, social media, advertisements and blogs, photography is and videography is in very high demand. So if you run a blog, a travel blog, if you run a newspaper or work for a newspaper, or if you have a product and you want to advertise that product, you're going to need uh, photographs and videography, most likely to create adverts, to create social media posts, or simply to illustrate images illustrate points, illustrate stories being written on blogs. Stock photography makes this easier for the people creating these social media posts or blog posts or advertisements. So instead of having to hire a photographer or instead of having to travel to a location, the individual or business simply goes to Shutterstock or any of the other stock photography websites and searches the key terms of images that they're looking for. Once on the stock photography website and searching their key terms, they will be greeted by a large collection of photographs uploaded by users, uploaded by professionals and hobbyist photographers alike on these websites that they can choose from. So they can download multiple images from different photographers from different parts of the world. For example, perhaps you run a travel blog and you write a story about Cambodia. Maybe you've been to Cambodia recently and you're documenting uh, your recent trip. Now you may need um, some extra images of Cambodia uh, and maybe you took some but they're not high quality, maybe they don't look as you wish they did, maybe you don't have the equipment, maybe you don't have the camera uh, to get the image you want and need for your blog post. So you have two options, you could hire a local photographer, um, you could go back there and try and get some equipment and do the trip all over again or you can now go to the stock photography websites search Cambodia and see the images on these stock websites that will probably be very high quality and easily available for you to download. Maybe you work for a newspaper and a news story has happened that took place in the city of Manchester and next to this news story you like an image of the city of Manchester. So once again you could hire a local photographer and that would have a lot of cost and potentially a lot of time involved. You could travel to Manchester, maybe you have a photographer you work for you, you could send them there, that would have a lot of cost again and may take a long time depending where you are in, in the world. Or perhaps you could just go to a stock photography website like Shutterstock and search Manchester and you would be um, greeted by the uh, catalogue of Shutterstock with a wide range of photographs taken in different areas of the cities by different photographers that you may be able to download at a much cheaper fee than paying a photographer or traveling to the area yourself. Stock photography websites have cut down the time and costs and difficulty of hiring a photographer and sending them to a location. Now you can search online on one of these websites and find images already uploaded, already on sale, 
um, that can easily be downloaded for quite a reasonable fee in many cases. Stock photography websites have disrupted the photography industry uh, in quite a big way, really, and not necessarily for the best if you're a photographer. If you're a customer, if you're an individual or a business who needs these images, then it may be a great advantage for you because it will likely have cut down the costs and difficulties of getting the images you need. However, if you're a photographer, you may find that there are way less jobs now because of the stock photography websites. People, businesses, individuals who need images are likely to go to a stock photography website and pay a small fee to download the images they need. Rather than hiring a photographer, less companies and businesses need a photographer and less people or businesses will be hiring a photographer when they can simply go to a stock photography website and download the images they want. Given stock photography isn't necessarily good for the photographer, as a photographer, is it worth your time? Let's begin the discussion by looking at expenses. It's no secret that photography is an expensive hobby. Uh, cameras are very expensive, camera lenses are very expensive, camera bags are very expensive. <laughs> You may need uh, different types of straps, one on your shoulder, one for your wrist, for your camera. You may need a variety of lenses. Uh, you may need, well, you probably will need at least one memory card or, or film if you're shooting on film. Uh, you may need a flash. You may need some lighting if you're shooting indoors. You may need different cameras. It's not that fun carrying a big Canon SLR around on a hike or in a busy city when you're traveling. And alternatively, you couldn't take that camera underwater. Maybe you're going snorkeling or need shots at the beach. Maybe you need something protected. So there's many different scenarios where you may need different cameras. You may need different lenses. You'll probably need a handful of memory cards or film rolls. You'll need a handful of batteries and you'll definitely need a camera bag. So to just to get started in photography, you're going to immediately have a high uh, price to pay. There's a high cost of entry when it comes to photography. A decent camera uh, with a decent lens is probably going to cost you more than $500. So it's not really something you can just get into very cheaply. I really wouldn't want to go back and calculate the costs of, or the amount of money that I've spent on cameras and camera equipment uh, because it would probably make me quite depressed. It is not only the cost of cameras and camera equipment that is expensive about photography. Uh, it's also quite expensive in post-production. So if you're a digital photographer, you're going to need a computer, not cheap, and you're also going to probably need some editing software such as Photoshop and Lightroom. If you shoot video as well as images, then this co these costs are multiplied as you need a better computer, uh, you often need a graphics card and some uh, more power, more, more RAM, more hard drive space. Uh, to process the video and you also need extra video editing software. So it, the cost of post-production is very high as well as the cost of equipment. And it's not exactly cheap if you're a film photographer either with the cost of developing chemicals and machinery and papers, uh, the cost of post-production is still relatively high. On top of the cost of equipment, on top of the cost of post-production, you also have the time cost of uh, photography. You may have to spend a full day out and about in town looking for that image that you have in your mind that you want to take. You may need to spend a full day in the studio uh, experimenting with lights and different objects to get that still life image you have in your mind. And you may need to spend a full day editing your image, color correcting, tweaking, and getting the printing settings or exporting settings correct before your image is complete. So photography is very expensive. Given these large expenses, can stock photography profits make this endeavor worth your time? How much can you earn from stock photography? How much you earn will depend on multiple factors. The quality of your image will have a big impact on how much you earn. So will the quality of your subject matter in your image. How well you understand stock photography will also impact your earnings as understanding the genre, understanding uh, the wants of the marketplace, and finding a niche uh, will help you as you start to understand trends that uh, appear on stock photography websites and you start to find a market 
that you can supply images for. The size of your catalog or the amount of images you have uploaded onto stock photography websites will also impact how much you earn. A larger catalog, a larger amount of images uploaded will likely mean uh, more chance of you getting a download each month from stock photography websites. Given these factors, it's difficult to estimate how much you will earn from stock photography. But to give you a rough idea of what you may earn, I will break down my earnings from stock photography websites. So first, just to look at some of those factors and how they um, relate to me. So I'm a um, reasonably well-equipped photographer. I did study photography for a brief time at college. Photography has been a hobby of mine for quite a long time, and I think I have a reasonable understanding of the sort of fundamentals and basics of photography. That being said, I'm by no means a professional. I've never done any professional work, and I still have a lot to learn. Um, I have a reasonable understanding of stock photography websites. I've been uploading images to these sites for around two years now. Um, so I'm starting to understand it a little bit, I think. When it comes to the size of my catalog, I have around 500 images uploaded to stock photography websites. So for myself, I usually earn somewhere between one and five dollars per month. So that's around 12 to 60 dollars per year. I think last year I did earn around 40 US dollars. And if you're interested in seeing a deeper breakdown of my earnings, I do do monthly updates on this channel. So make sure you subscribe if you're interested in seeing me break down my monthly um, stock photography earnings. Given the high expenses of photography and stock photography, and given the low returns I have shown you that I make on stock photography websites, how can we possibly consider stock photography to be worth your time. How can stock photography be considered worth your time? First off, I will start by assuming that photography is already a hobby of yours. So the expenses of camera equipment and editing software are probably applicable if you're uploading to stock photography websites or if you're not. In this case, the small income from stock photography could be seen as a very nice uh, source of income that can start to offset some of the costs of the camera equipment and editing software. I also think that stock photography is a good place for beginners to start earning their first source of income from photography. Stock photography is very stress-free, very hassle-free. You don't have to deal with any individuals or businesses or work with people who may cause issues for you or may not pay you or anything like that. Stock photography has a very low barrier of entry and is pretty easy to get into and start earning your first couple of dollars from photography. On this point of being good for beginners, I do still consider myself very much a beginner when it comes to stock photography. Although I've been doing it a couple of years, I'm only just starting to put in the time to learn more about the industry and more about the types of images that do well on stock photography websites. So as I showed my earnings, I do think that they are very small. I do think they will grow in the future as I develop as a photographer. And as I start to understand stock photography more, I think we can start to expect a higher return from our images and time spent uploading them to stock photography websites. Possibly my favorite thing about stock photography websites is after the images have been uploaded to the stock photography websites, the income generated from those images is a form of passive income. Uh, passive income is beautiful because it requires no additional work from you. So day or night, 24 hours, these images are on sale and available for download. You don't have to do anything more. You don't have to sell them. You don't have to advertise them. Uh, you don't have to go back and touch them up for a client or anything like that. It's very passive once you've uploaded the image to the stock photography website. Now, I'm not saying that taking the image, I'm not saying that editing the image is passive. I know that can be a great deal of work. Um, but if you already do that, if you're already a photography hobbyist, so you're probably taking images and editing images anyway. So if you take the next step and upload them to stock photography websites, from the point after the image has been uploaded, the income you earn is a form of passive income. And it feels very good to have a stream of passive income coming in. My final argument for stock photography being worth your time is a little bit clunky. And uh, so it's a bit of a flawed analogy, but bear with me because I think it makes some sense and it's something that I think of when I think of my stock photography catalog. So let's compare my stock photography uh, catalog to an interest earning bank account. So bear with me. Okay, so let's imagine um, that your stock photography 
let's imagine that they are dollars. So let's imagine that one photograph equals one dollar. So let's imagine you have 500, so you have 500 images. Well, that's $500. Now let's imagine that the stock photography website is a bank account. So uh, let's imagine you put your money in your bank account or your stock photography <laughs> images in the stock photography website. And let's say this bank has an interest rate of 5%. So if you have $500 in an interest earning savings account at 5%, which is a very good interest rate in these days, uh, you would earn $5 per year. Now, if you had 500 images in a stock photography website, I'm fairly certain that you will beat this rate of return. And that is my very bad and very clunky analogy, but it does hold some weight because it has been an idea or an image that I've been using as comparison for a long time. I'm not sure why, but it seems to work for me, so maybe it'll fit for you. And in this scenario, stock photography does come out looking very favorable. So that's why I'm leaving it in my reasons why stock photography may be worth your time because it's something that is encouraging for me. Now we've looked at the expenses and potential incomes of stock photography, let's come to some kind of conclusion of is stock photography worth your time? Conclusion. My answer to the question, is stock photography worth your time? Maybe. I guess it depends. If you're not a photographer already, if you don't love the art of photography, if you don't spend your time taking photographs and editing them already, I'm going to say that stock photography is definitely not worth your time. The startup costs of getting into photography are already so high that the minimal return you will make and the steep learning curve you have to uh, begin the journey of ascending is so uh, steep that I really don't see it as your time. Stock photography is not a get rich quick scheme, definitely not. And it's not really a side hustle. Anyone could sort of just jump in passively and start making some money, unfortunately. The cost of entry would probably start at a minimum of around $500 just to get your camera. You would have to then spend a lot of time taking photos and editing photos. And if this is new to you, you'll have to spend a lot of time before you even start doing that, learning and learning about editing. You'll have to learn about taking photographs and that's a lot. It's a lot of time, a lot of effort, a lot of energy, and probably a lot of money to start something, especially if you have no interest at all in photography. Uh, I really don't think stock photography is worth your time. However, if you love photography, if you have cameras at home, if you take pictures relatively regularly and you enjoy doing that, and you would like to do that more, if you have some level of um, development or you can do some kind of post-production, maybe uh, you, you wouldn't be too daunting jumping into Photoshop and start off doing some post-production, then I think stock photography is worth your time, especially if you have a large amount of images sat around on hard drives and not really doing anything. You could take those images immediately upload them to stock photography websites and probably start earning a couple of dollars. You can then start to learn a little bit and build from there, increasing the amount you earn. And like I said, if you're already if if you're already taking pictures, if you're already going to be continuing to take pictures, this may be worth your time. In my opinion, stock photography is worth your time, but only if you're a keen photographer, it's a hobby or a passion of yours, and it's something you'll be doing anyway. You may as well start uploading some of your images to stock photography websites and start earning a little bit of money back. But let me know in the comment section, what do you think? Do you think stock photography is worth your time in 2021? I'd love to hear your opinion on that. And if you are interested in learning more about stock photography, then subscribe to the channel because I do monthly updates of my stock photography earnings and make uh, a variety of videos about the topic on the channel. So subscribe if you're into stock photography. That'd be awesome. If you appreciated this video, if you found it useful, if you learned something, then definitely consider hitting the like button. I appreciate you taking the time to watch this video and hopefully see you next time.